Um, so let me go through my opening here. Uh, so as a preliminary matter, this is Larry Murphy, chair of the Newberry Planning Board. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Planning board members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Peter Pecos? Yes. Woody Knight? Yes. Mary Stone? Yes. Yeah, and George Morse will not be with us tonight. Town staff, when I call your name, please respond. Martha Taylor, planning director? Yes. And Kristen Grubbs, assistant town planner? Yes. And anticipated speakers, uh, Tom Zarico, Zenko, LLC? Yes. I know you're here, Tom. We saw you. Uh, so this is uh, August 16th, 2023, open meeting of the Newbury Planning Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, which extends the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain revisions of the open meeting law, General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31, 2025. This order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location and allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. For this meeting, the Newbury Planning Board is convening by video conference via Zoom as posted on the Planning Board's agenda, which can be found on the town's website, and which identifies how the public may join. You may join us by going to http colon backslash backslash zoom.us and entering meeting ID number 832-7141-3056 or by calling 1-929-205-6099 US New York and entering the meeting ID number when prompted. Um, please note that this meeting is being re recorded uh, and that attendees are participating by video and or telephone conference. The meeting is also being broadcast live through the local access cable channel nine on Zoom and at www.tnctv.org and the recording will be available on the Newbury Access YouTube channel. Meeting materials were provided to the board members prior to the meeting for review. Applicants or their representatives may be called upon to speak, and if needed, uh, share information to the screen. Uh, please state your intention after you have been called. For the uh, business ground rules, before we turn to the first item on the agenda, let me go over some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. As chair, I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After speakers conclude their remarks, I will go down the list of board members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Uh, please hold until your name is called. Further, for all attendees except board members and staff, please remember to mute your computer using your mute button or on your phone, um, a star six to toggle mute or unmute when you're not speaking. Please use earbuds or earphones with tablets and cell phones. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. Please be aware that video participants can see you and that you should take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. For any response, please wait until I yield the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If board members wish to engage in discussion with other members, please do so through me, taking care to identify yourself when you wish to speak. For public comments, there will be an opportunity for public comments and questions during public hearings. After board members have spoken, I will afford the public an opportunity to comment and or ask questions as follows. I will see questions and comments through the, raise, uh, through the Zoom raised hand function. For video conference participants to raise your hand, hover over the bottom of the, view, the Zoom window below the photo gallery and click on the gray hand that appears. Please ensure your name is fully and correctly displayed on the participant list. You may rename yourself by using the more function next to your name. For telephone participants to raise your hand in a Zoom meeting, hit star nine on your phone keypad. I will then allow questions and comments from members of the public who have raised their hands in the order in which they are listed, which is determined by the order in which people click on the raised hand function. Each participant will be called on to provide his or her name and address and then ask a question or make a comment. I will afford the applicant, participant, or his or her representatives the opportunity to reply. Your hand will be lowered when you've been given the floor for your questions. I will then continue down the list of those in the raised uh, hand column and again afford the participant, applicant, or representative an opportunity to speak. Should there be a physical or electronic submittal of questions or concerns, they will be noted for the record and again 
the participant, applicant, or representative will be afforded the opportunity to speak if the issues raised have not yet been addressed. And finally, please note that uh, each vote taken at this meeting will be conducted uh, at um, via roll call vote. So we have um, it's 706, so we can't talk about the public hearings just yet. So let me turn to the agenda. And uh, we'll start with the liaison reports. Martha, anything from the select board? Uh, yes, a few things. Um, their last meeting was last week on the 8th. And um, uh, public property request, a liquor license. I did give a, a um, brief presentation on the green communities. Um, application that we're putting, uh, hoping to, well, we're planning to submit in September to the state for green communities designation. Um, and asking, we're gonna be on the agenda again of, at their meeting next Tuesday for approval of the energy reduction plan. So that's in the works, uh, just about ready to, to get that uh, submitted. So that was, uh, that was it. All right, thanks, Martha. Uh, for the ZBA, uh, their regular monthly meeting is tomorrow night. The only thing on the agenda is a continued public hearing for 134 Northern Boulevard, which I reported on last time. If you recall, it's to alter a, uh, to, to alter or renovate a pre-existing commercial restaurant into a single family dwelling. So again, that's a continued public hearing. Um, that's it for the ZBA. What do you have anything for conservation? Uh, <clears throat> the glitchy meeting was last night. Um, uh... The, there was some technical problems, but what I got, uh, what was on it was a few septic systems, uh, an addition on Plumbush, and then there was a uh, conversation about 68 Green Street, but I had technical problems and can't report on that because I didn't, uh, wasn't able to watch any of it or participate in it, so I don't know what the what the end result with 68 Green Street was, but there was so, there was a, some sort of a plan to fix the problem after the last rainstorm we had. And that's it. Okay, thanks, Woody. Uh, Martha, the next item is NVPC, but I, I believe they're still on summer hiatus. Is that correct? That's correct. So I assume you have nothing to report then? Not on, not on that, not on okay. meeting. All right, um, we got a little time, Martha. Do you wanna do the planning director's report? Uh, sure. I um, have a few things here. So um, the 68 Green Street issue that uh, Woody was mentioning that the CONCOM talked about last night, we were alerted um, at the end of last or middle of last week about a, a stormwater runoff issue from the lot that's directly ahead. Um, I think that's lot one. And um, there was it's quite a bit higher than the abutting property, which is at 70 Green Street. And there was, um, after last week's rainstorms, um, there was some significant amount of runoff coming from the site onto the 70 Green Street property. So we had a site walk out there on Friday morning that included Sam and Joe Serwatka and um, uh, TJ Melvin from Millennium Engineering and um, Mike Dos Santos to take a look at the issue and uh, see what the what the causes and what the solutions might be. Um, one issue seems to be with the downspouts, which were actually, they're going into the ground, but they were bubbling up. So obviously the water wasn't infiltrating. There's also some grading issues. A lot of, a lot of the grade seems to be sloping towards 70 Green Street, um, both immediately adjacent and from the other side of the property. So TJ is going to, um, draw up a plan. We talked about creating a swale or berm um, and doing some regrading and addressing the downspouts to try to direct all the water away from 70 Green Street. So that that plan is in, in process. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think in this case, the, the actual building is much larger than the footprint that was shown on the subdivision plan that was approved. And so the grading uh, you know, there was no grading plan that uh, was developed that we saw anyway to actually kind of address the, that change. Um, 131 Newburyport Turnpike, Newbury Self-Storage Bill. 
I know has received a certificate of compliance from the Conservation Commission and does want to um, you know, submit. We have an as-built from him would like is requesting to close out the project. I think there are a couple of things that need to be discussed. So we'll probably be addressing that in a meeting quite soon. Uh, in particular, um, k and is storing uh, some of their, um, the rock that was blasted um, for Bill's project as well as I think their own and, and in the area that's uh, between the two. So that's gonna have to be dealt with. Um, Newbury Golf Center, um, there's continued discussion on closing that project out. There's gonna be a site walk tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Um, to take a look in particular at the uh, the jurisdictional wetland because there is an enforcement order still um, on the part of the Conservation Commission. And the information that's been provided so far really hasn't been sufficient to show that all the issues have been addressed. Um, so we'll be looking at that and kind of the, the mitigation plan um, as it was approved versus what's actually out there. Um, Finally, Steve Sawyer had said that he wanted to be, come back to talk some more about 105 High Road and, and some of the grading changes or potential grading changes there. I spoke with him uh, earlier and he will probably be asking to be on the agenda for the September 6th meeting. So, um, and Kristen and I uh, had a good meeting today with um, our new representative, Kristen Kasner, and uh, her aide, Christine. Christina Eckert, um, sort of about planning in Newbury in general and uh, MBTA communities and, and some of the other topics of interest. So it was it was great to have a conversation with both of them and and uh, kind of form a, a relationship that uh, you know going forward. Thanks. So that's uh, that's all I have. Thank you, Martha. Thanks, Martha. So we still got about two minutes before we reach 7.15. Um, why don't we uh, see if we can take up the uh, minutes from August 2nd. Has everyone had an opportunity to review those? I'm seeing some nods, at least one. Uh, does anyone have any uh, uh, any questions or comments or requests for modification of the minutes as presented? No, hearing none, is there a motion to approve the August 2nd, 2023? No, excuse me, minutes? So moved. Thank you, Peter. Is there a second? Second. second. Thank you, Mary. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, Peter, how do you vote? Yes. Woody, how do you vote? Yes. Mary, how do you vote? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Okay, thank you. Let's move that stuff along. So... 714, and I just need to wait another fraction of a minute to talk about the uh, uh, public hearings. Good jokes. Takes forever, does it? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to bring a joke book, but I, I forgot to do it. <laughs> and I have a terrible memory for them. So, okay, what well, was it? the father jokes or something? Uh, <laughs> yes, yeah. Bad dad jokes. Bad dad jokes, right? Oh, 715. Okay, so we can we can skip over the bad dad jokes thing. Um, so we have on the agenda several public hearings tonight. We have concurrent public hearings for 170 Orchard Street, Map R20, Lot 43A. The owner applicant, the estate of Louis Bulgaris, care of Diane Yerkovich, uh, continued from 7-19-23. And this is a definitive subdivision plan application for Fields Way, 170 Orchard Street, and a common driveway special permit application for a common driveway serving two lots at the proposed Fields Way subdivision, also 170 Orchard Street. Street, and we do have um, a request for continuance uh, from the applicant to continue this matter until September six, our September six meeting at seven fifteen p.m. via Zoom. Um, I don't know. If I I think it might be prudent to have a motion on that. Is assuming well. First of all, is there any discussion about the request for the continuance? Okay, hearing none. Would anyone care to to move to uh, continue the public hearings? 
until our uh, September 6, 2023 meeting at 7.15 p.m. via Zoom. So moved. Thank you, Mary. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Woody. Any discussion? All right, then all those in favor, uh, excuse me, Pete, how do you vote? Yes. Woody, how do you vote? Yes. Mary, how do you vote? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Uh, the next uh, uh, public hearing on the agenda is for 7 uh, Bittersweet Lane, Map U09, uh, Lot 21B, Common Driveway Special Permit. Uh, application, the owner, David W. Foley Sr. and Nancy J. Foley, the applicant, Gage Foley. Uh, this was continued from 7 19 20, uh, 23. And uh, again, we do have a request from the applicant to continue the public hearing on this matter uh, until our September 6, 2023 uh, meeting at 7.15 p.m. via Zoom. Is there any discussion on the request? Then would anyone care to make a motion to continue the public hearing until September 6, 2023 at 7.15 p.m. via Zoom? So moved. Thank you, Mary. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Woody. Any discussion? And uh, hearing that, Pete, how do you vote on the motion? Yes. Woody, how do you vote on the motion? Yes. Mary, how do you vote on the motion? Yes. And I vote yes as well. So we can move on then to the next item on the agenda. Well, we have no new business, which is actually the next item on the agenda. Actually, so under old I business. If I'm I sorry. may, um, possible point of order, I just uh, remembered, Mary is not actually a voting member for the 170 Orchard Street um, hearings. I don't know if it's an issue. Um, well, it, it, or, it's it, administrative, so it's. I, th I think the motion still stands because we still have three yeses, so yeah, okay. I would, wouldn't be concerned about it. And it's right. more of an administrative issue anyway. So Right, right. But sorry. It, your point is well taken, Martha. Um, anyway, uh, so under new business, we have none. Under old business, we have Tom Zarico, Zenco LLC, Ray Fieldstone Lane, 15 Coleman Road, request to release lot, to release lot four, which is eight Fieldstone Lane from the restrictive, uh, uh, performance covenant and to release the restrictive performance covenant, uh, the alternate, um, uh, and to uh, provide an alternate form and amount of security in lieu of the restrictive covenant. Um, Tom uh, is requesting the release of lot four uh, in order to convey the lot. I believe you have a, a closing schedule for the 23rd, Tom. And this yes, is the last, the last lot being uh, held. So releasing this lot effectively means releasing the performance covenant, which is the form of performance guarantee for the project. Um, and we have a, a, a draft form E release of lot and draft release of performance covenant that has been submitted to, uh, for the board's consideration. But before we can release the lot, we need to come to an agreement uh, on some amount or some alternate form of security to complete the uh, uh, items um, uh, on the subdivision, any uncomplete, unfinished items. Um, so I know. Uh, Tom, I don't want, I'll let you speak for yourself, but I, I believe it's proposing $6,000 in cash. Um, and we our uh, um, engineer, Joe Suetka, has uh, recommended an amount of $30,000 to cover completion of the as belts and other items uh, uh, that he's noted as incomplete. And otherwise, and otherwise, any adjustments need to be made pursuant to final inspection. So, Tom, I'll turn it to you. Okay. Uh, thank, thanks, Larry. Tom Zarico, um, for High Street, North Andover. Um, the um, uh, hopefully the uh, well, the form of, of, of the security will be a cash deposit anyway. Um, so, uh, and I think um, uh, there's a form that uh, that Martha uh, provided the draft of that you used before that um, that uh, is is fine with me. We just uh, revised the. Uh, uh, the subject property on that on that form, uh, so I, I assume that's that's sort of inconsequential in terms of in terms of that. I'll just write a check for whatever I have to. Um, um, uh, if I can inter uh, uh, interrupt you for a second, you're referring to the form uh, F one. Uh, Martha, is that what it's called the the F one? Yeah, I think yeah. that's what it's referred to. Yeah, yes, you, you provided yeah. that, Martha. Uh, yes, and I forwarded that to to the board members okay. earlier. Okay, all right, yeah. nice. Sorry, and, go uh, ahead. 
No, that's okay. Thanks, Larry. The, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that, that, that's a much more comprehensive uh, um, agreement than I that I would have thought, but it's it's all fine because we'll perform on it anyway, so I'm not worried about that. Um, uh, the the amount though, I really want to speak to that, and I I um I was kind of taken aback by the by the thirty thousand dollar recommendation uh, to, to say the least. I mean, um, you, you know, I I wish that uh, I, I guess Joe went out there. I wish I had had the opportunity to, to meet him there and actually just discuss what what has been done or hasn't been done particularly as it relates to the to the as built and you know just in the way of background every every community every board uh has a different expectation of how much detail and what items are going to be on an as built plan um we've dealt with a number of different towns and everybody's a little bit different um along the way here though one of the things that that um uh, I, I don't know if joe uh is, is aware, but all of the services are marked, I think, except for two on that plan. All the water services, the gate valves, the sewer stubs, they're all there except for two that were inadvertently left off. That was done way back in January, I'm sorry, December of, of 21, when it, when that work was done. Uh, and that as built, uh, interim as built was submitted back then, which is you know closing in on two years now. It's been, this project has been through two winters uh, with with the binder pavement uh, and all of the utilities there, there wasn't so much as a ripple in the in the binder pavement. Everybody knows that we've filmed it, documented it, uh, and and now we've done the finished pavement, and it works equally well. And we had a, a great test of, uh, uh, of of some of that over the last week and a half, uh, showing that the uh, water is going where it's supposed to and and ending up where it's supposed to. Um, the one thing that I think you know, is, is on me in terms of uh, maybe not distributing some of the survey information that has been done is every foundation before we get a, a, an occupancy permit, or I think in fact, before we, before we get our first inspection uh, on, on a building permit, uh, we've supplied the certified as built plans for those foundations to inspectional services in every case. So those are all that work doesn't need to be done. That work is on file with somebody. I, maybe I should have sent it to planning as well. I didn't think of doing that, but it is on file. It is there. All of them are compliant with uh, with all setbacks. Um, all of the water sewer services have been documented with Byfield Water. They won't give us a they won't give us a water meter without us giving them all the details of where the services are stubbed to and then and then run into the house. So. So the, the point with, with, with those items is, uh, is not that though they're located on the interim as built that we gave uh, some time ago. The point is that that survey work doesn't need to be done. All needs to be done is an administrative task of adding or merging those files onto one plan. And the same thing, the same thing applies with the septic system. Obviously we couldn't get a building permit or certainly get an occupancy permit without having a certification of the septic system it was done a long time ago. Um, and uh, done by you know a different engineer with different credentials, but those files just need to be merged together. It's an administrative task. The only field survey work that needs to be done really is 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 grading, a topo, uh, dry, driveways and walkways possibly, um, and the monumentation, which we know what that's what that costs, and we've already we've already. Uh, um, submitted that information. So I, 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 I understand that the board needs to have some kind of security to make sure that nothing moves. And if there's some micro adjustments that need to be done to grading or something uh, before, before getting total compliance, but you know, everything under the ground has been there through two winters. Um, you know, the, everything functions the way it's supposed to. Uh, Everything drains the way it's supposed to. Um, yeah, I'm, I think the thirty thousand dollars is just excessive. Even if we doubled the doubled what I think and what I've been told by my surveyor, the survey work is going to cost, and added, you know, I, I hate to say a number because it's more than I think, but added five or ten thousand dollars for some minor grading. There's no more construction going on out there. There's no more heavy trucks. I mean, we were very deliberate about not doing the finished paving until the finished flooring for the last house was delivered because it was a box truck 
we, I didn't want to have any any large uh, vehicles out there, um, you know, and there's no more work to be done out there of any consequence, no more physical work. Um, I mean, I, I want to be reasonable. I think every, I mean, I guess I have to be reasonable because I'm asking for a lease. So I will do whatever I'm told to do, but I, I think the $30,000 is just really excessive. Um, I, I just, I, I, $6,000, you know, maybe maybe extreme in the other direction in retrospect, but I think there's a number that's somewhere in between that makes much more sense to me. And I don't know if it's twelve or fifteen thousand dollars, but but I just think thirty is excessive under the circumstances. That's most of my comments. Sorry to be so long winded on no, this. No, no, that's all right. Um, actually, before we get into the substance of it, I, I just want to take a quick look at the form of some of the documents that have been um, been submitted. So we have the release of performance uh, covenant. Is that something that you or your attorney had prepared, Tom, or Martha, did you provide that? Uh, Tom's attorney provided that. Yeah. And also the uh, Form E certificate of performance. Um, remind me, do both of these have to be recorded at the register or is it uh, just one or the other? I'm thinking belt and suspenders, probably both. Yeah. Anyway, the only thing I comment I had on the form is on both of them, there's a reference uh, until acceptance of the ways by the town meeting vote, given that uh, uh, it's a condition of approval um, uh, uh, that this remain a private way. I think that that language should probably be stricken. Um, and on the form F1, um, other than the, uh, the uh, amount of the deposit of money, which we want to discuss with the board members, um, there's also a reference on page two to an appendix to be attached. Is that something you would provide, Martha, or is that something Tom would provide? It's um, a certificate of approval and all conditions of approval of this subdivision as set forth in the appendix attached and uh, made an enforceable part of this agreement. That's the second paragraph on page two. So let me just... I don't need an answer to my question right now, but let me just point out that that's something that needs to be addressed. Um, as far as, uh, oh, and Tom, is your, is your bank the Enterprise Bank in Lowell? Yes. Okay. Um, but again, this would be a cash, uh, just a cash bond, Larry. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a reference here to the bank. I just want, this was obviously, um, modified from a different, from an earlier decision. I just wanted to make sure it was accurate. Um, yeah, and, and when we did that, Larry, just so you know, I, I didn't want to change anything from that form because I didn't want uh, there to be more of a decision for the board than, right. than there has to be. So I included that, even though I don't think it's material, but it's okay for you to know who my bank is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, I hear you. Uh, let me turn to the board members, see if we have any comments, Pete. Um, yep. Yeah, thanks very much, Larry. And thanks, Tom. Uh, hey, Martha, I just want to uh, uh, bounce back to you for a second. When Joe came up with this um, 30,000, uh, was was there consideration to the comments that um, Tom has alluded to uh, in this discussion? So well, I think, as Tom said earlier, it probably would have been beneficial if the two of them had been able to be out there. The only thing that uh, Joe was working with was, um, you know, the well, he went he went out there um, and looked at the uh, the interim as built plan afterwards, and he felt that there was still a substantial amount of work that needed to be done to actually bring that up to what's what's required on the final one. So he was initially kind of thinking about it as since we we didn't have this information from Tom, you know, kind of had to go under the assumption that that we didn't have it. It hadn't been documented yet. Okay. And so considering the things that Tom has um, uh, shared with us uh, this evening, there's only a couple uh, uh, items that uh, need to be addressed. Is that what I understand then? Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's true, uh, Peter, if I can answer that. I mean, I, again, uh, you, you know, shame on me for not distributing everything that I distributed to the other departments. I distributed, you know, the, the certified foundation plans and the water service uh, to the homes to the respective departments that that asked for them, I didn't I didn't know or think that 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 was necessary to 
uh, to submit to planning, to tell you the truth. I mean, but but those have all been there and, and have been required to be there, whether I say it or not. We can't get those permits and those meters and those other things from those departments without submitting those items. I would I would have thought that Joe might have known that because it's pretty typical that those things need to be submitted uh, or we can't get the permits that we've that we've obviously received in order to continue with the work. But but again, uh, I didn't submit them to, to planning, but they do exist in uh, in department files. And I mean, I can run them over tonight if you want me, <laughs> if it helped, but they're all they're all there is the point. I mean, not all the information, but the, the only thing that needs to be done is the finished pavement is, you know, one and a half to two inches higher than than the than the uh, uh, than the binder pavement um, and uh, some of the driveways and walkways. Uh, you know, I assume that you'll want to see those on the uh, on the plan as well uh, and, and the grading, which um, which is rel relatively simple. I mean, honestly, that that field work for the surveyor is at most two days. Okay, I'm just thanks, thanks, Tom. I'm just trying to uh, negotiate this this discussion now because we have a recommendation from our consultant that has uh, one number. We have a, a, a request for something uh, different, and I um, understand that you're going to be putting up cash. And Larry, I'm not sure, and I'm going to look to you for a little guidance with this. Would it would a bond be an easier instrument to use? Uh, it, so it's that, actually the applicant's decision yeah. uh, under the statute, as I understand that he can choose the form of security. Yeah. Right, and we would have to do this tonight so that Tom can have his closing. The, in, the in, order, in order to in order to make the closing for next week, yes. If it was if it weren't for the for the time crunch, yep. um, I would suggest you um, you know have a conversation with Joe, Tom, and come back and see us. But that's not going to get you a, a closing date of the twenty third. No. Um, you know, if and and to be quite candid with you, it's kind of a big ask to ask the board to ignore the advice of our consulting engineer on this. Um, I mean, my th thought, uh, frankly, would be to go ahead with the thirty thousand, and without prejudice to you to come back at some point and revisit it, but at least get your closing done next week. Uh, well, would it? Would it? I, I appreciate that. Um, um, would it? Would it be? Uh, uh, reasonable for me to come back in the next couple of meetings after I put all of this information on another as built um, and and get a a partial release of this. I, I mean, I I actually don't know what the thirty thousand dollars represents. Right. And that's one of my problems. Is it it can't possibly be for for survey work, which is the only thing left to do, unless there's a, a load of loan to grade something out. I mean, it's. It didn't cost thirty thousand dollars to do all of the engineering on this project, so so it's 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 a it's an excessive amount just for just for an as built. Uh, uh, so I, I uh, my concern, Larry, and with, with and I, you know how I respect everybody is that I go back and get the as built done uh, and get some small amount of this $30,000 released. And then I'm sitting there saying, well, what, what's the rest of it for? Because it doesn't, doesn't seem to be, I can't imagine what it's for. Uh, that's, that's the, that's the yes. challenge. I yes, Mary, go ahead, please. Sorry, um, do we have a rundown from the engineer about where the 30,000 came from and how it's broken out? What it's just, do you have any specifics on the number? There is an email from him, which I don't have at my fingertips here. I didn't print it off and don't have access to it. Um, do you have, uh, you wouldn't have his email, Martha, would you? Um, I can pull it up. And it wasn't, it wasn't a tabulation. Um, oh, okay. So it was a little bit more of a, a narrative. And, you know, the, the initial assumption was that the, uh, Basically, the complete as built would need to be done, and that could range from ten thousand to twenty thousand was what he had. Assuming um, that the town was starting from scratch, I think starting from scratch, right, right. And let me see. I'm just looking for that here. Um, so I'm that, glad I, I'm glad I have the surveyor I have apparently. <laughs> that's always helpful. Um, and I'm just okay. I've got it here. So 
So he and his email this morning said they're starting to install the pool behind the house with the chamber system. We'll definitely need have to do a site walk to make sure landscaping is per plan and all areas are stabilized. The price of 2,800 for as built plan must be to do final touches, but you know, absent actually having anything other than the interim plan. If the town wants to cover the cost of a complete as built plan, it would likely be 10 to 20,000 to start from scratch with all the field work and utility locations. And said at this point, I would recommend the town request a 30,000 bond as we have not been presented. Um, and at this this point, he didn't have the, the interim in hand. I think that came a long time ago, um, but he didn't have it in hand. Um, we haven't been presented with as built information, site inspections and any landscape adjustments are a consideration. So that was, that was it, as I said, it, you know, it wasn't a breakout of tabulation. Um, the other consideration here is I think that, you know, the board per our rules and regs is still, um, you know, basically the rules and regs say that the board shall hold some some funds aside um, equal to 5% of the total cost of the improvements until the trees and other vegetation have been established. That's not something that was mentioned in, in Joe's letter. And we know from Tom that some of them have gone over a winter, some of them are new. So I think that is another consideration here. And then and, and, and again, just to reiterate from the last meeting, I planted, I don't have that in front of me, but what, 30 or 35% more than than was required. So if we had a 30% fatality rate, which we've never lost the plant, um, we'd still be in compliance. That's so the so I, I understand the comment about the plantings, but I think it's uh, <laughs> I think it's a little bit I think it's a little bit overkill. I could go out there and pull out I think something like 74 plants and plant them at my house and I'd still be in compliant in compliance with this. And you know, I, I I know that sounds crazy, but you know, I, I try to overdo things very deliberately so that you know, so that I'm given some kind of consideration for the extra work that we do. Um, you, you know, I understand that you need to do something, and I understand the position you've been put in by 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 Joe. And I think I think you know, honestly, I'm just going to say it: I mean, a ten to twenty thousand dollar as built is is outrageous. the The interim as built that was done already, which included all of the pipe all of it, all of the curbing, all of the pavement was $2,800. That's what it was. Cancel check, you can see it any time. So, so ten dollars to $20,000 is just an outrageous suggestion for, for that work. And, and, you know, I'll post it. I'll give you the uh, money. Uh, I, I need I may, excuse me, I'm sorry, Tom. Um, it seems to me that there's such a discrepancy here and, and granted we should be taking the advice of our consultant, but yeah. with um, Tom's in, and I'm not sure what the planning board role is, but I don't feel confident that I can make a decision either way at this point. I don't have enough information. Well, we, we need to make a decision. Uh, we don't need to make a decision. He needs to. <laughs> Okay. Yes, that's 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 a good point. Like I and uh, I appreciate that. I I do need a decision because I I can't let this transaction uh, get get mucked up because of because of the timing here. I you know I, I don't want to beat a dead horse on this. I think you all know where I stand. Um, I'll bring a check in tomorrow morning first thing for thirty thousand dollars. I I hope you can sign the releases and and whatever else we need to uh, hopefully tomorrow so I can get them to, to my buyer's bank on Friday because I know the town offices aren't available on Friday. I don't feel I don't feel good about it honestly. I felt wonderful about how I've been treated. I think this is a shame uh, that that somebody from the outside is 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 uh, you, you know causing me to close out this subdivision with with not the kind of feeling I I, I had. Uh, for this project. Well, let me try to to help us here, Tom. Um, we we and I, th I think I'm going to speak for the board. We have enjoyed working with you on this project, okay? And I have respected our conversations and uh, 
the uh, the openness and when we run into situations, uh, how, how we've negotiated them and the willingness with the Father Stone and how you've worked with a conservator to help with our open space. Um, all that we can do is we, we have a consultant, the consultant made a recommendation to us. Um, if there had been a little bit more time in between, you know, the, the conversations or the conversations that could have taken place, we might have been at a, at a different point this evening than where we are. But um, we are where we are. And you, uh, you need you have a time constraint on you, and I, and I'm sorry that that's that's the case, um, and I feel very confident that those funds would be able to be released in the timely manner that they should be, and maybe there's a mechanism that can we can discuss with staff about that, and I don't know if that is something that could be entertained, but your willingness to do this to conclude this is appreciated, and I do not want you to have a bad taste in your mouth about this process because you know we worked collaboratively throughout this thing. Um, and we're just following guidance and that's all that we as a board can do. And it is nothing personal. It just, that's, that's where we're at right now. So, uh, please do not leave this, this meeting this evening with a bad taste in your mouth. Otherwise I'll go get some popcorn or something. Well, well Peter, first of all, I, I appreciate that. And I, I, um, I know it's not the board. I, I, I said that I think you've been put in a position that's unfortunate. Um, and, and that's, that's what I feel. I, I don't want, I don't ask any board, I, I've never asked any board, any place I've worked to do something that they couldn't do for everybody else, uh, uh, you know, while setting the precedent in, in how you deal with me. So I don't want to put you as board members in that position. I'm just letting you know, you know, that how I feel about it how, as a professional, right. you, you've never seen me argue or debate Right. Or or not do anything that was asked. So I appreciate your comments, and and I'll write the check, and um, right. and we'll do, and hopefully we can take care of this uh, tomorrow, so that the weekend can be more settled. Right, beautiful. And, and Larry, if there is a way with Martha to facilitate, if there is, you know, another discussion that takes place, and it's felt that partial release should occur because X, Y, Z conversation didn't take place in the interim. Maybe that mechanism could be put in place. I don't know, um, but that's a thought. Uh, I, I see no reason why we couldn't come back at a later time and uh, revisit this. Okay. All right. Thank you, folks. Um, so we're going to need several motions, I think. I'm just looking at uh, our notes here. But before that, Martha, was there an issue that, that we needed to talk about, about a, a field change? Um, there's there's one thing from um, very early on, the, the radius of the paving at the intersection of Coleman and um, Fieldstone. Tom had requested that it be a little bit, um, not, not as gradual as what was shown on the approved drawings to, in order to save those trees. But in fact, um, the board never actually discussed that as um, you know formally as a change. It was sort of a wait and wait and see how it goes. So it's not not a request that we actually have tonight. Um, it's not on the agenda, but it is something maybe to be addressed next time. As as uh... if I could jump in, I I think I think we submitted that as a, as a major change, Martha. And had a, had a vote and a hearing on that. Uh, we did for the property line, but it actually did not include the the street pavement radius itself. You know, it was for the property line for the the parcel A for the Witchstone. Really, I that's uh, I think we had extensive discussion about that uh, at at that I time. Have, I thought I, I thought we that was that was the the reason. I mean. That that radius was was the change. Well, the that, radius, the property line was the radius be, to to make sure that the witch stone was was clearly, um, you know, within the right of way. The radius as it was before, kind of cut right behind it or right through the back corner of it. But I'll go back and check my notes. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't remember that the pavement radius itself was part of that discussion. I, I, I think, I mean, from my own memory, I think we all know what was being proposed out there. I, I don't uh, think that, I, I, I don't think, I don't see this as a major issue, but. Uh, no, I, I don't I, either. I think, I think it's. Cross nope. the T's and dot the I's, Martha. 
right? Or, you know, maybe it's just, it's documented on the as-built and called out as a change from the original approved plan. That might be another way to deal with it. Okay. So do we need to do anything further, uh, worry about that tonight? Um, I, I wouldn't actually, since it wasn't on the agenda for any kind of action. Um, you know, it's just a note that was brought up as, as part of this whole discussion. Of I'm sure that be worked out. All right, so um, I believe uh, we, as I said, I, I, well, I'm sorry. Uh, is there any, Woody, uh, we haven't heard from you. Is there anything you wanted to add? No, I just took in the whole discussion and unfortunately for Tom, the, um, as a board, we should go with what the consultant says, what Joe says, and um, unfortunately it, it doesn't meet your wishes, Tom, but it's the right thing to do. All right, then um, I would entertain a motion to approve the form in the amount of security, uh, that being in the amount of $30,000 to be held in lieu of the performance covenant. Would anyone care to make that motion? I'll do that for you, Tom. I still like you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Is there a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Woody. Any discussion? And hearing none, Peter, how do you vote? Yes. Woody, how do you vote? Yes. Mary, how do you vote? Yes. And I, I vote yes as well. Second, I believe we need a motion to release the lot for and performance covenant contingent on submission uh, of the uh, bond or deposit of funds with the town for security. Uh, so do we have a motion? So moved. Uh, Woody, thank you. Is there a second? Oh, second. <laughs> thank you, Mary. Uh, any discussion? All right. All right. Uh, then uh, Pete, how do you vote? Yes. Woody, how do you vote? Yes. Mary, how do you vote? Yes. I vote yes as well. And lastly, uh, I'd ask for a vote to authorize me as chair to sign the Form E uh, in the release of performance covenant and the agreement um, for the uh, new form of security. Um, I think that's it. Uh, so what is, do I have a motion for that? So moved. Everybody's shy. Mary, thank you. Is there a second? Yes. Thank you, Pete. Uh, any discussion? All right, then uh, Pete, how do you vote? On yes. The motion? Woody, how do you vote on the motion? Yes. Mary, how do you vote on the motion? Yes. And I vote yes as well. So Tom, I, I think we've we've done with you tonight. So uh, like I said, you're, you're welcome back anytime. It, it, my suggestion is you might wanna to talk to Joe, talk to Martha. You want to come back and revisit the amount of the, the deposit. I'm sure you're welcome back anytime. Uh, I, I appreciate that. I, uh, I've already cut the check. It was just printing in the background. So I'll be there early tomorrow, Martha, with it. And um, Larry, if you have the opportunity tomorrow to, to get signatures, it would be a big help to me. Uh, I'll, to, to get I'll those. make myself available. Oh, I do, I do have one question. I'm sorry. About just the form of the... Uh, uh, the guarantee. Um, it, it's, it just calls for the signature of owner. Is that, as an LLC, and I'm trying to remember, isn't it the uh, managing, managing member? member? Yes. Would that be the appropriate uh, term? Yes. Yep. An owner? Okay. Yeah. And this is, this is a single member LLC. I'm the only member and I am the manager. Yep. Okay. So managing member of the Zenco LLC. Would be. Yes. Yeah. And okay. Very good. Thank you. All right. Thank you, folks. I'll see you again soon. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Just to let you know, we will, we will be on a site walk early tomorrow morning, so um, not quite sure when we'll get back. Okay. Um, I'll, uh, if you could let me know when, when you, when you yeah. do, I'll make myself available. I have a 930 appointment myself, but uh, if it's not necessary to bring the check at, at 8, I'll, I'll bring it when you call me. Zero, okay. um, I think your signature needs to be notarized too, doesn't it? I believe it does. Yeah, as as will mine. So I'll, I I'm wide open tomorrow, Martha, so I can make myself available whenever you need me. Okay, we'll coordinate that because I think uh, we'll probably need to make a few tweaks to the documents before they're signed. Okay, yeah. and I think you have them in word form, Martha, don't you? Yes, I do. Thank okay. you. Okay, okay, thank Very you, folks. Good.
Thank you. All right. We'll Thank see you tomorrow. tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. And that, that is it on the agenda. 7.50 p.m., 7.51 now. Unless there's something else, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Uh -huh. Thank you, Peter. Is there a second? Pete. Second. Thank you, Woody. Any discussion on the motion to adjourn? Hearing none, Pete, how do you vote? Yes, thank you. Uh, Woody, how do you vote? Yes, and good night, everyone. Thanks. And Mary, how do you vote? Yes, and thanks, everybody. I vote yes as well. Good night, everyone, and I echo my thanks. Right, thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody. See you, Martha. Bye.